How's it going Eliminators? Today I'm going to be showing you how to clean the carburetor on a Briggs & Stratton 500 series engine. So let's get right into it. So I have a Briggs & Stratton engine. These are known as like the Briggs & Stratton 500 series engines with the plastic carburetor mounted to the fuel tank right there on the machine. These are super simple to clean guys. So I'm gonna be taking you through the process right now. The tools you're gonna to need is a half inch socket, a 3 8 socket, a number two Phillips screwdriver, and also a slotted screwdriver. Now I currently have this engine on my little engine stand table here because we removed the engine off of a mower that was completely rotted out. So that thing is into the scrap bin and I'm gonna be doing a carb clean on this so that I can re power another mower deck that's in a little better condition. So the first thing we're gonna do, slotted screwdriver and go ahead and remove the screw for the air filter cover. Once that's off, we can have a little better look at the air filter just completely gummed up with oil and all sorts of nasty grass and dirt. I'm gonna be putting a new air filter on that after, but here's a little thing that I wanna show you guys. There's gonna be a little gasket here and we're just gonna peel this off and we're just gonna put that off to the side for now so that we don't lose it. Okay, next up, we're going to be taking a 3-8 socket here and removing that bolt and a half inch socket there and we're gonna remove that bolt. Now I have both of those bolts loose but I wanted to take a quick second here to explain how the governor works. So this is your throttle right there. So if you wanna lower the RPM of your machine, you simply push in on this and that'll decrease the tension on your spring. And if you wanna increase the RPM, you simply push that little post outwards to increase the tension on that spring and your engine will rev higher. But now that I have my bolts off, I'm simply going to come over here and we're going to disconnect the spring. So just go ahead and disconnect it. Just try not to overstretch your spring when you're disconnecting that. But now that the bolts are removed, we can go ahead and gently start to pull the carburetor. You guys can see that I'm just twisting it ever so slightly. And we're gonna pull the carburetor off of the intake manifold. Now, I did a video on replacing a cracked intake manifold. I'll link it in the top right of your screen if you wanna check that out. Sometimes on the plastic ones, they can crack and then your machine can hunt. But you guys can see here that there's gonna be an O-ring and then a white plastic retainer. We're gonna go ahead and pull that off and put that to the side. Now the trick's gonna be to get the throttle lever off of the throttle linkage there. Now if you have a look here, the throttle linkage goes down and then it comes back out. So all you're gonna wanna do is pull that and then we can go ahead and twist this. Now when this engine is mounted to a mower deck, there's normally a little bit of extra room for you to twist that down but because I have it on my table, there's a little less room, so I have to lift my engine up. But all you're gonna do is pull the fuel tank and the carburetor down with that linkage up, and then you're gonna rotate it and slide it off. It's quite simple, and it's gonna look something like that. Now, this engine is leaking a little bit of oil. We can see it here, so I'm assuming there's either a head gasket leak or the head bolts have simply come loose. That's probably the case because it happens a lot on these engines, however, you can see that because there's a bunch of oil, I am gonna be going in here and cleaning this, but today's video is just gonna be on how to clean one of these carburetors. So I've disconnected my spring here and I've taken that off simply so that we don't lose it. Now I can go ahead and pull off our crankcase breather vent tube. This is a little 90 degree and actually we can see here that this one's cracked, so it's not gonna be working as it should. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that when I go to reinstall this carburetor onto the machine. But you can simply remove that little rubber boot. And now there's going to be, depending on your model, five or six Phillips screws. So there's gonna be Phillips screws back here, two of them, and then there's going to be three Phillips screws here. You can go ahead and simply remove them and we can pull our carburetor right out of the fuel tank. Okay, so I have the five screws removed from my carburetor, but when we remove the carburetor, you're gonna notice that the throttle is now on the right side of the carburetor when we're looking at the fuel tank from this side. That's not how it's supposed to be. So there's this little tab there and you can simply pop the throttle over top of that. Sometimes when you're removing it because the spring's hooked up, it's gonna pull that over to one side. So this is the side that you want to have your throttle on. That's gonna be a big deal because if you go to reinstall it like this, your machine's not gonna run right because it's not gonna rev out. So you want it on to the left side simply like that. But now because the screws are loose, we can go ahead and simply pull the carburetor out and on this model, the bowl is built directly into the fuel tank there. Now I'm gonna get into 
replacing the diaphragm and the gasket shortly. But this right here, guys, is essentially your fuel pump. It runs off of the little spring here. So that continuously moves up and down, which pumps fuel through the main pickup here and then into your engine to make it run. So now we can have a little better look at our carburetor. Now there's gonna be a spring here. You can simply pull that up and go ahead and remove that and put that off to the side. There's going to be a little screen pickup and you guys can see just how dirty this thing is and it's probably dirty on the inside as well. Let's get some light in here so we can see it. So there's one of our ports here and then we have our primer bulb here and this model is supposed to shoot fuel directly into the carburetor so you guys can see the little pickup there and then that shoots it right through here into your engine. The main thing is that that little brass jet there that gets clogged up and your main jet here gets clogged as well. So we're going to go ahead and remove this screen and then I can show you what the main jet looks like. Sometimes they're a little tight, but this one just pulled off. So that's your main jet, guys, right there. A certain size lets a certain amount of fuel through, but they get clogged up and your engine won't run. So if you have a machine where you go ahead and let's say you prime it three or four or five times and you pull the cord on your engine, it fires up and then it dies immediately. What's happening is your primer bulb's working and your primer is shooting fuel into the engine. Your engine's burning off that fuel and it's trying to suck some fuel through the main jet, but it can't because the main jet's probably clogged. So then your machine just simply dies. So we're going to go ahead and clean this carburetor. The only thing I wanted to make note of here is that this is a plastic carburetor. And the biggest thing that I see a lot of guys do when they clean these in ultrasonic cleaners, which I have, they take these, they put them into their ultrasonic cleaners and they put hot water with a you know cleaning solution like a degreaser like I have the Indo 701. This carburetor, because it's plastic, can warp around this edge here. So this edge is supposed to be perfectly flat, right? So what happens is guys put these into an ultrasonic cleaner with really hot water thinking they're gonna do a good job at cleaning it and there's a little warp that happens. So when you go to reinstall this carburetor onto your fuel tank, you'll notice that from here to here, there's a large space that doesn't have a screw. This side has more screws here so you would get less of a gap there but what I see is a lot of times the carburetors after they've been warped is they'll leak right here or they'll leak right here or they leak at the back there so the biggest thing to do on these is just simply use lukewarm water but these things are so easy to clean guys you can do it with a little bit of dish soap and a garden hose and I'm gonna show you how to do that so even though I have an ultrasonic cleaner I have a little spray bottle of spray nine here shout out to permatex for sending that my way and i'm just gonna douse this carburetor as best i can now you guys don't have to use spray nine but this stuff works pretty awesome so that's what i'm using but i'm gonna go ahead and take my garden hose here and i've set it to a spray that's fairly aggressive so you guys can see it shoots out pretty good and we're just gonna go ahead and blast this thing now the big thing here is you're gonna want to get all of the holes and the ports in the bottom of the carburetor here Now, just by using a little bit of spray nine and a garden hose, you guys can see that we got this thing really clean. And what you can do with your garden hose is go into these ports here and aim the nozzle directly in there, shoot water through the main jet, shoot some water through that screen pickup there, make sure that's all clean, and then go ahead and spray the brass jet in there and just kind of force the water through. Now, additionally, if you do have a compressor, I would suggest taking a compressor and just blowing out all of these holes, make sure they are clean and free of debris. And that will also help dry your carburetor off so that it doesn't have any water in it. Now I'm gonna do a primer bulb test once we get the fuel tank clean. So so I'm going to move on to that next. Now I have my fuel tank here. I'm going to be replacing the gasket and the diaphragm here. So I'm just going to go ahead and tear that off. But what you want to remember is that it goes gasket first and then your diaphragm is going to be on the bottom. Peel this apart so you guys can get a little better look. But that's that's just how it goes, guys. So gasket and then diaphragm on the bottom. Now I'm going to wash this out with some spray nine and a hose the same way I did the carburetor. But first I'm going to drain the fuel into a little jar. Okay, so I've now drained the fuel from the fuel tank into a jar. You guys can see there wasn't that much in it. However, there was a bunch of gunk in the bottom of that fuel tank. And even though this carburetor runs that little screen pickup, which is right over here, and has a screen on the primer pickup. The bowl is built directly into the fuel tank here, so you guys can see just how much gunk gets in the bottom of there. Now, before you rinse out the inside of the fuel tank completely, this would be a good time to go ahead and 
clean off the bottom of the fuel tank as well because there's always going to be a bunch of grease and dirt that builds up on the back side of that. We're just going to go ahead and spray the top where the bowl is there and then we're going to go ahead and spray a bunch of it into the fuel tank itself. Then you can go ahead and take your hose, put your hose into here, and we're just gonna spray until the water that comes out of this hole here is clear. That'll let us know that there's no more spray nine in there. Now it's gonna take a while, but eventually you'll get there. So you guys can see lots of spray nine still coming out of there. So we're just gonna keep going until it's clear. Go ahead and give it a shake too. Make sure you get all the dirt and debris out of there. And just keep blasting it until the water coming out of that fuel tank is nice and clear. Just like that. Now go ahead and shake out as much water as you can there. And because it's a nice sunny day, I can go ahead and leave this to sit in the sun and dry out. Or you could go ahead and take an air compressor and just blow out all the water from inside of that tank. Okay, so going into one of my many little gasket containers here, we're going to be using a Stens 520-175 gasket and diaphragm kit and that replaces a Briggs & Stratton 495-770. And just like I said before, go ahead and lay your diaphragm down first, and then you could go ahead and line up your gasket on top of that. Now if you wanna make sure that your primer bulb works 100%, another little trick you can do is take your finger and cover that little hole there, and put this end right there up to your ear, and then go ahead and press your primer bulb a few times. You should be able to hear and feel air coming out of this tube. So that's a quick little way I know the primer bulb works. So I'm gonna go ahead and take our diaphragm fuel pump spring here. And we're just simply going to go ahead and pop that back onto there. I also went ahead and cleaned out our little pickup screen. So we're gonna take that and put it back on top of the carburetor just like that. So we're now ready to take our carburetor and simply drop it into place guys. Then we can go ahead and get our Phillips screws back in. Now when you're putting your screws back in, I would recommend just starting them all out first and then go slow. Because that spring is on the carburetor, when you press the carburetor down, sometimes the diaphragm in there can pull itself and misalign your holes. So you just wanna make sure that you don't tear a gasket or your diaphragm. So you wanna get all your holes lined up first. I'll go ahead and tighten up all these screws and then we'll go ahead and get our O-ring and our O-ring retainer in place. So our carburetor is now installed. We can go ahead and take our little O-ring and just pop it in. You guys are gonna notice that it's gonna have a little groove that it's gonna sit into. And then you can go ahead and take your retainer and that you should hear it click when it pops in. Just like that. So now the O-ring is in there and it's not gonna come out. And this little retainer is what helps keep that nice tight fit up against your intake manifold. So now this carburetor and fuel tank is ready to be reinstalled onto my machine. Now I'm not gonna be reinstalling the carburetor onto this machine because this engine still requires a little bit of work. Like I said, I wanna go over the head bolts and just wash it, clean it up, and make sure that uh, everything on the engine side is good to go. But our air filter here, is in desperate need of replacement. And I can wash the air box the same way I did the carburetor and fuel tank. But I have a brand new air filter here. This is a Stens 100-632, and that replaces a Briggs & Stratton 698-369. So that's the green filter, the ones you can get on Amazon. They're cheap too. They're not as nice of a quality as these. Sometimes the holes are kind of offset a bit, but it's foam, so you can just go ahead and jam it in there. And uh, these are quite cheap, guys. I have a bunch of them because I work on these carburetors and these engines all the time. Well, that's it for today's video, guys. Like I said, those carburetors are super easy to clean, but if you're taking the time to clean a carburetor, you might as well go ahead and clean the fuel tank as well. That way you're gonna limit the chances of something going wrong once everything's reassembled. So if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check the channel out for new content, and as always, guys, thanks for watching.